Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and today we're going to process a picture into black and white using Nix Software's Silver Effects Pro. Um, before we do that though, if you guys could take a minute and go down below and click the subscribe button and subscri subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. Um, if you could comment on the videos and like the videos, I'd really appreciate that too. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to start out in Lightroom and process the photo a little bit in Lightroom before we send it into Silver Effects Pro. Um, we start out in the basic panel and I have a lot of training software or training videos on Lightroom on my website anthonymorganti.com and on YouTube. Check them out. Uh, the stuff I'm going to do I'm just going to do real quick here but I have um, I think so far there's uh, eight or nine episodes and counting of Lightroom training and it's all free um, so check it out and you could see why I adjust the sliders the way I do if you watch those videos. Um, when I do a landscape photo as you'd see in those videos I turn highlights all the way down I bring shadows all the way up. Um, I then adjust the white point by holding in the alter option key and I tweak the white point up until that black screen that we're looking at I just start to see some white dots come in. Uh, similarly for the blacks I hold the alter option key down and I uh, bring the black slider down. Now the you know the screen turned white and I'm getting some black bleeding through. I usually bring this a little further than I brought the white one. Okay, then that added some contrast. Um, I don't want to add any clarity, which I would normally do, because um, when you convert the photo into black and white, it tends to add noise, and the clarity adds even more noise. So I won't be adding any clarity, and vibrance and saturation really don't matter at this point, because we're turning it into black and white anyway. Um, you could add a little contrast if you if you want um, but pretty much I'm done in the in the basic panel and I could actually send this over as is now into Nick um, Silver Effects Pro but I'm not gonna yet I'm gonna do one other thing is this um, foreground area is just you know uniform green grass and if you saw um, some of my Lightroom training I kinda jazz it up a little by adding some brush strokes and um, it's akin to um, you know, kind of uh, dodge and burning a photograph. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the brush, we're going to uh, get a new brush by double clicking, or we're going to reset the brush by clicking on effect, by just double clicking that it resets all these sliders. Um, we're going to bring exposure down a little bit. We could adjust that later. The brush size is adjusted with the bracket keys. The left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key makes it bigger. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to paint on a little dark area here, like this. Now that's a little high, or a little too dark, I should say. So I'm going to tweak that down just a little. And we're going to just bring some over here, maybe some over there. Now I'm going to get a new brush by clicking on New. I'm going to double-click the effects to reset everything. I'm going to bring exposure up this time. And we're going to bring exposure up over here. It's a little too much, but I'll adjust it down in a minute. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller and bring it in here and a little bit in there. Now, as I mentioned, that's a little too much, so I'm just going to grab the slider for exposure and bring it down just a bit. Okay, um, that's it on the brush. Now, the reason why I did that, if you look now, it looks slightly more interesting than when I had it like that. All I did was add a little little bit of interest. Um, okay, so um, that's um, done as far as I'm, I'm concerned as far as bringing it uh, through what I want to do in Lightroom before I send it over into Silver Effects Pro. Now uh, to do that you could either right click on the thumbnail image and when you do that you could go up to Edit In Silver Effects Pro. You could um, right click on the image itself go to Edit In Silver X Pro, or you could go up to Photo, Edit In Silver Effects Pro. Now it's going to come up with this dialog box. Um, you're going to want to edit a copy. You don't, you know, obviously want to edit the original um, file. Um, it's going to be a TIFF. I leave it in sRGB. A lot of guys labor over which one to pick. I just leave it in sRGB. RGB. 16 bits per component, 240 on the resolution, no compression. Send it over. 
really uh, don't want to burn too many brain cells worrying about that. Um, once you convert it into black and white, you'll see it gets a little noisy anyway, and all that other stuff I don't think matters. Okay, let's make this bigger. Already, um, it's in black and white when it comes in. Um, on the left side of here, this left panel, are some presets. You could pick a preset if you want. Um, already, when I'm picking presets, I see I have sensor spots. Drive me nuts. So when we're done with this, I'll go in Lightroom and clean up those sensor spots. Um, so there's um, all kinds of presets that comes that come with it. I mean, some are really bizarre. Um, if you like a preset, by all means, save a lot of time. Pick a preset. Um, but I'm going to leave it uh, in neutral, uh, as that's what it was when it came in, and we're going to do our own adjustments. Now, you could click on this box right here in the far left-hand corner, and we get rid of this left panel, and it makes it a little bigger so we could see what we're doing. Um, now, in the right panel, we have a lot of uh, different adjustments. Um, there's um, We start out usually with global adjustments. Obviously, it's going to affect the entire picture as... Um, as we uh, move the sliders. Um, as far as exposure and brightness, basically, I think it's right on. I don't really want to adjust that. Um, you can mess around with the mid-tones, see if you, you know, if you think you could bring something, you know, a little more the way you, you know, to your eye, you think you like it. Um, bring contrast up, down, double click on the slider, we'll put it back where it started. Um, to tell you the truth, as far as brightness and contrast, I think I'm fine. Um, I really don't, um, really not worried about much of that. Uh, move everything back to where it was. Um, structure is kind of like the clarity uh, control in Lightroom. And remember, in Lightroom, we didn't do any clarity adjustments um, because we could do it here with structure. We'll will bring out a little, little more in the photo that um, you might not be seeing. Um, so you could just slide around the sliders. I mean, you're not going to hurt anything. Just see if you could. Um, if anything looks appealing to you. Fine structure, what I found, tends to add noise. I mean, it. If I know you probably can't see, but I'm looking at the sky and it's adding um, a grainy looking noise um, to the sky. So I usually don't mess around with fine structure too much. I do bring the uh, just the normal everyday run-of-the-mill structure up though. All right, that's all the global adjustments I'm going to do. The real power, I believe, of um, SilverFX Pro and a lot of Nick software in general are the uh, control points that you could add. And um, what you do is you just click on this thing here and you bring it out. I want to adjust the sky. I want a lot more detail in the sky. Click here. Um, now what this is, it added um, a point. And in that circle is generally where I'm going to be adjusting. Um, you could click right here. And it will show you um, in more, you know, in a white and black silhouette and white where you're going to be adjusting. So we're going to be adjusting, obviously, right in that sky area there. So um, this first slider at the very top, you could adjust the size of where you're adjusting. The next one's brightness. I'm going to be turning brightness down. I want, I want this to be a little darker. I want contrast up. I want it more contrasty. I want the structure up. I want more detail. Now it, it tends to bring in a little noise, but that you know is going to be uh, uh, going on with the black and white anyway. So um, we'll have to deal with it. Um, whites in this case really is not going to do a ton. I mean, it's going to nothing I want to mess with. Let's put it that way. So. White, I'm not going to worry about too much. Uh, blacks, I might want to amplify some of the blacks a little bit. Fine structure, as I mentioned before, that adds considerable amount of noise, uh, usually. So I'm not going to do much with that. And selective color, uh, this, you know, if you wanted to, you know, have a little blue of the blue sky come through. Uh, but I don't want to do that. Okay, so we adjusted this part of the sky. We could add, keep adding control points to the sky, but a shortcut is if you hold the Alt or Option key in and take this control we just placed down, you're actually going to copy it to there. And we could copy it again, and we could copy it again, and we could copy it again. Yeah, put it there. Might as well copy another time there. 
And um, okay, now we could adjust some of the individual sizes um, of them a little bit so that they um, tend to um, cover the sky a little more thoroughly. Okay, that's good. Now um, I got the sky kind of like I want it, although these sensor spots are driving me insane. Um, so we could do some more control points in the grass uh, if you want. So we're going to do a new one. We don't want to copy the sky. So we click on that there, come down here. We're going to add a control point here. Um, we're going to adjust the... Well, come up the size is here well just the size make it kind of big and probably bring the brightness down just a touch contrast up just a little and the structure up a little bit and we're going to copy this one by holding the alter option key down bring it over here hold the alter option key down copy another one over here and okay, so we got the um, the grass covered. Um, we could do one for this tree. Um, we'll do that. I'm not sure how this one's going to come out. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to let's bring it a little bigger. I want to just bring the brightness up of the tree a little bit. That's it on that. That's all I want to do for that one. Okay, um, if we take the selective adjustments, turn them all off, that's what we started with. And this is after our selective adjustments, what we did. Already the pictures uh, dramatically changed. You could also um, click this little box right here. It'll show you the before and after. You, know, you hit this one, you could put them side by side. Well, this is when we came over from Lightroom, and this is where we are now. Okay, uh, the next thing is these color filters. Um, these are kind of cool. This is kind of like if you were in processing film and you hit a filter, used a filter, what you would get. Uh, the first one here is just a neutral filter. It's just gray, um, not doing anything to the photograph. The next one is orange, as though you had an orange um, filter on your camera. Um, pretty dramatic change. Yellow, a little less dramatic. Um, if we do green, um, see green now the green grass is brighter and, and now black is, is really not what I want. Um, I kind of like the orange and or the yellow filter, particularly the yellow filter. Um, what we could do is that could be a starting point and we could take the strength now and just bring the strength down a little bit. All right, I kind of like that, what it did there. So we turn that filter off. That's before, and that's with the filter. And we could go to here, and we could see the, where we stand on the changes now. Um, what we do is, bear with me one second. I want to turn this, that off. There we go. And. Um, the next one down, for after we did the color filter, we have the film types. You could actually um, emulate an, a, an actual film that, you know, like a Kodak 100 T Max Pro, Ilford FPR, FP4 plus 125, and so on. You could just, and you could try these out. A lot of them have a lot of grain because that film had grain, you know, a lot of grain when they used it. And if you like that look, you could go for that look. Um, you could just kind of go over them and see if there's one you like. Um, and, you know, just keep trying them out. So far, I kind of like a few of them. This is where we started. It's the ACFA. I kind of like that one. I kind of like that one. That one I really like, I think, though, the, the Kodak. So if we pick the Kodak, and if I turn it off, that was before the Kodak film was put on there, and that's after. So I kind of like that. All right. You could adjust the grain. Uh, you can make it uh, grain per pixel. You know, make it real grainy by going this way. Less grainy by going that way. I'm going to make it less grainy. 
Um, softness and hardness is the actual um, the way the grain is. Since I have the grain all the way fine, you really can't see it. But um, actually, I can't really see it doing much in this film here. As I go towards hard, I could see the grain is getting slightly more intense, and I'm not sure you'll be able to see that on the um, on the movie or the video here. Um, but anyways, you could play with all that. Also, there's some sensitivity to red. Now, obviously, we have a blue sky. So if I move this blue slider, you could see it's going to affect mainly the sky. So you get an idea. Is um, blue? I'm making blue darker by going to the uh, left and blue lighter by going to the right. Um, so, you know, um, it's kind of like to your taste. And... You could, you know, with these sliders here, I could uh, really dramatically change that photograph. Um, the next, finally, is just finishing adjustments. Uh, you could tone this picture. Uh, so much you could do in Silver Effects Pro. You could, you know, use some sepia tonings and different, you know, overall tonings. I'm not going to do it. I generally am not a fan of toning, um, but you know, if you are, by all means, do it. Um, there's. Um, this little triangle here is if you click it it will expose more um, uh, controls sliders so you could do different things you know experiment with them um, it's really impossible for me to show you everything Silver Effects Pros does in one video mainly because I don't use like 75 percent of it um, and I don't think most photo photographers will use uh, most of it um, they have a way they do it, and um, this is the way I generally will do a black and white photo. Um, you know, your um, mileage may vary. What I do like to do is I add a vignette, um, and you could go down here. There's real strong ones. You could add white ones. You could just frame it in black, a little stronger. You could do a custom one, make your own. Uh, this, you know, the amount as you go to the right, it goes white. As you go to the left, it goes black. Um, you could make it more of a rectangle as opposed to a circle and I kinda like that and um, the actual size it's you know real small it's you know not very very large at all whatever so I like a slight vignette it helps draw the viewers attention towards the center of the picture um, you also I mean you could burn the edges of this um, you know, all all edges, uh, real strong, something like that. That's more or less a vignette. Um, I don't usually mess with anything like that, and I usually don't do any image borders either. But if you want to uh, do a print and you want some image borders, because you, you're going to frame this in a mat, you could, you know, do something like this. Um, again, I don't do anything like that. Um, now, as far as I'm concerned, I'm done. Um, I'm bring it back in Lightroom get rid of these uh, sensor spots but this is um, where we came from Lightroom and this is where we are now and um, you can see um, what I did why in Lightroom I did those brush adjust adjustments to the grass it just add a little little interest here um, if I was gonna do this again I might darken this bright shoreline right here a little bit but then again it kinda does contrast nicely against the darker water so you know I might leave it it, it depends um, but um, as far as I'm concerned as I mentioned this is done in Silver Effects Pro you click Save it'll save the image and when you come back into Lightroom um, it should be there and there it is now as I mentioned I want to get rid of these uh, sensor spots so you click this um, this uh, second control or second tool from the left of the spot removal tool or you could just hit the Q key to get you to that tool and you want to make the brush just a little bigger than the spot and you click on it and you can, it senses you know it will take a sample from somewhere else um, sometimes it, I don't like where it takes it but I have a whole episode in Lightroom on this tool I show you all different ways you could adjust of this or use this tool to um, to do different things. I mean, it will take away uh, sensor dust spots, and it, I mean, if it will even, I could take out part of this tree if I wanted to. So look at my Lightroom training for that. That's on YouTube and on my website. And um, 
that's pretty much it. So that's it. This is where we started when we left Lightroom. And this is where we are now after going to Silver Effects Pro and um, just getting rid of the uh, sensor spots in Lightroom. Um, so that's it. I hope that helped you um, with uh, Nick's um, Silver Effects Pro. Very powerful program, program and very popular. Um, they were purchased by Google about I don't know, a year or so ago. And um, it's way cheaper in price. I think the entire suite of Nick software used to run around $300. And I think now it's less than $150. So it's uh, really something you should look into investing. And it integrates into Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, so you could launch it just like I did right from Lightroom. So that's it. Uh, again, I'm Anthony Morganti. Uh, visit my website, anthonymorganti.com. Every day I try to add stuff on there on uh, photography training. There's videos, there's articles, all kinds of stuff. Also, do me a huge favor, and if you could uh, subscribe to my channel here on, on um, YouTube, and if you could like the videos and comment on the videos, I'd uh, really appreciate it. And if you have any questions about photography, email me. I'm glad to answer them. And um, thanks for watching.